everybody. We're back with this week's edition of Clover Connections. Uh, the four of us are excited again this week to be joined by one of our colleagues, uh, Kevin Palmer, who is the 4-H Youth Development Educator and Professor over in Manitowoc County. Uh, and we're excited to talk with you, Kevin, uh, as we were kind of getting ready for this, we started talking a little bit about a really unique space that you have in Manitowoc County that's a camping facility called Camp Tapawingo, where you can do lots of great outdoor experiences. And in a time when some of our clubs might be looking for opportunities to get together, uh, we know that outdoor spaces provide that, uh, that, ex that experience, sometimes even easier in times of COVID than indoor spaces. So we're really excited to hear a little bit more about what Camp Tap Tapawingo is here in Manitowoc County. And I'm hoping you can tell us a little bit about the facility and what it offers. Great. Yeah, I can. And uh, thanks for having me. It's on 78 acres. It's located five miles north of Michigan. And it, uh, we have trails, probably about five miles worth of trails set up. Uh, and we uh, have other facilities and, and can do a lot of different activities. The East Twin River runs right through our property. So we do fishing, crayfishing, uh, aquatic invertebrates. Uh, we also do geocaching, archery, uh, pickleball, um, and a variety of craft activities and outdoor, other outdoor recreation activities. So it's a great place to experience the outdoors. We do have some questions for you though about how this camp facility might be something that maybe some of us might be interested in learning more about, maybe even coming to visit. So um, I believe Jill, you uh, might have our first question for us. Yeah, so Kevin, this sounds like such an awesome space and I know I've been there and it's so beautiful. As a volunteer club leader, someone in another county, how do I schedule coming to Cap Tapawingo? Yeah, if you want to come out, uh, you can just send me an email. Uh, at this point, we're not charging anything uh, for the use of the facility. We do accept donations just to help offset our cleaning costs, basically. But uh, we want people to use the facility. I mean, it's there uh, for 4-H to use. And uh, send me an email, and I can work with you uh, to set up a schedule of time and uh, activities that you want to do, and also to put together the program planning checklist. We have some templates available, so that makes it really easy. Yeah, Kevin, you bring up a great point. So one of the things that we need in order to have in-person meetings is we need that program approval checklist. So you can reach out to your local educator if you need Kevin's contact information, if you need to find that template or talk to Kevin and he'll be happy. It sounds like to help you with that. Thanks, that's awesome. I'm so excited. And I'm gonna head it over to Dawn who has our next question. So Kevin, is there a limit of people, like a number of people that can participate at one time? Well, yes and no. Um, you know, we're in 4-H, we're working with groups of 10. So uh, if I'm going to be the instructor, then I can accept up to nine other people. Uh, and one has to be an adult. So it could be eight youth and one other adult. Um, and, you know, that would be uh, for something like archery, where I have to be the instructor, we need a an archery instructor. But if you wanted to come out with a larger group, and you had some leaders uh, that wanted to do some of the teaching, uh, certainly, uh, we have 78 acres to spread out across. Uh, we have a large lodge, uh, a nature center, and an arts and crafts building as well. And those facilities can be used so uh, we can accommodate larger groups. Great. Thanks so much. It sounds awesome. I'm going to turn it to Marie. I know she has a question. So, Kevin, that does sound really great. But, you know, I don't live in your area, so it'd be a really long drive to come and visit. Any ideas for how I might be able to use some of those great ideas? You know, I think Wisconsin has more camps uh, than any other state. Uh, we have a lot of other outdoor facilities and environmental education centers, outdoor centers, uh, as well across the state. So um, I think finding somewhere in your area that outdoor space that you can go to uh, and partnering with them. And uh, many of them are open and looking for, uh, you know, people to come and use their facility. That's what it's there for. And I'm going to guess, just like you, they may have some resources there at their facilities that we could utilize too and so it might be some different activities but they might have them there. Absolutely uh, most of the uh, facilities do they have um, outdoor activities environmental education that they do with the local schools for instance uh, and I know right now some of those facilities aren't doing that because schools are virtual uh, so they have staff available and willing and able to work with other groups too so yeah I would encourage you to do that. Thanks. 
Um, and so, Kevin, um, in some of our previous uh, editions of Clover Connections, we talked about the three parts of a meeting. What we're, what we're hearing here, what I'm hearing here, is that this is a great opportunity for us to do education, maybe some recreation, certainly the life skill and kind of that collegiality among our clubs that some of us are really missing in a time when we haven't been able to get together as much as we had been in the past. So um, I guess as we wrap up this edition, I just want to remind everybody out there that um, 4-H is more than your business meetings. And so uh, giving your young people the opportunity to do some of these things like uh, outdoor education, outdoor fun time, pickle. I mean, I don't know what pickleball is, but you better be guaranteed I'm going to be learning about it really quickly. Archery, geocaching, uh, survival, all of those things are great opportunities for our clubs to come together in small groups and learn. Um, Kevin, I want to thank you for joining us for this edition of Clover Connections. We hope you'll come back and talk with us more um, and join us next time for the next edition. Great. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, and I guarantee if you come out uh, and use the three parts of a meeting, you'll have the shortest business meeting ever, ever, because <laughs> on our front lawn, kids are just going to be wanting to get out and experience the outdoors. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today, everybody. Have a great one. Bye.